Welcome back. That was a quick one. Uh, got these videos out nice and quickly. Uh, so basically, in the previous video, we looked at enzymes, and we noticed that we had a substrate, we have an enzyme, we have a particular place on the enzyme which we call the active site, and that's where the substrate and the enzyme bind together and undergo the reaction. And we've, we introduced ourselves to an allosteric site, so a place outside of the active site, which is also a binding location as well. We saw that the substrate can go into that active site. We have this induced fit model, which means we get this conformational change to the active site to better fit that substrate. And then we produce products. It could work in the other way. We could have, we could have two substrates make one product, um, or we could have um, one substrate make multiple products, for example. Okay, so we're just gonna move backwards. You notice we have a different molecule here, but if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that it, it looks very similar to the bottom of this molecule here. Now the green molecule is our desired substrate that we want to break down and form products, but this one here looks like if we let it, it would also fit in the active site. And that's a big problem. So you'll notice it does fit in there and it occupies the active site. It blocks it. We call that <clears throat> a competitive inhibitor. Now the reason why we call it a competitive inhibitor is because it's competing for the active site. But because it can't be broken down itself with that particular enzyme, it just occupies the active site and blocks it. Now that enzyme <clears throat> now can't catalyze the substrate that we want it to. Okay, now in this example, you'll notice that we've got a molecule down the bottom here, which is what we call a non-competitive inhibitor. So this binds to a place outside of the active site on the enzyme. But when it does that, by binding to that allosteric site, it actually causes a conformational change on the whole enzyme and therefore causes the active site to change. Now you notice that the active site is no longer complementary to the desired substrate. <clears throat> so because of that, it's now acting as an inhibitor of the reaction and now the reaction can't take place. Okay, so there are two types. There are two types of inhibitors, competitive inhibitors, which compete for the active site, and if uh, successful, will block the active site, and non-competitive inhibitors, which will bind to an allosteric site, and therefore cause a change to the active site, making it no longer complementary for our desired substrate. Hope you found that video useful. Should have been nice, sharp, and shiny. Again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, post them below, and I'll try and uh, help you out. And check out any other videos on the Facebook or website. Make sure you're a subscriber. Bye.